Hi, it's Liz again, and I have a third pair of earrings for you today. I have named these the Rose Hip Earrings. Um, they're a bit more spring-like in palette and nature than other things I've done today, but they are very pretty and easy to put together, and most importantly, they mimic some of the techniques um, in the DIY kits available at my Etsy store. So if you're an um, absolute beginner at all this, you can watch as someone puts this th sort of thing together, and you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So, start off at the top, I've got a fish hook ear wire. Some people like these, some people don't. You can use any sort of earring finding you prefer. I like these because you can often buy them in bulk, and they seem to go with everything. And moving down, we have a couple of jump rings, which we will need for the project. We will need, ultimately, four jump rings. I've used a silver color here. This would be equally nice in gold, brass, copper, whatever you prefer. The, uh, the center bead here, the larger one, I have a pink glass, I guess lozenge shape. Um, again, size and color can vary uh, according to your preference. I've tried to keep this a little more modest because not everyone likes as, as heavy an earring as I do. So this is actually a very light, breezy thing to wear. So below that center bead, we have a length of chain. This is about two and a half inches long. Um, you can change up the, the length of the change, the length of the chain <laughs> as much as you like. Um, I, I think about a good inch is interesting. Um, I chose a longer one, number one, because I find it interesting to look at, but number two because it was large enough that people could easily see what I was doing. If I was messing around with a little half inch of chain, it might be hard to see what I'm getting at. Um, but consider this sort of uh, a baseline, and you can make it as long or short as you like it. As long as you get the jump rings on, it's all good. So at the end of the chain, we have a little miniature dangle with two simple, ho uh, two simple loops. This is a round, uh, pink, nice plastic bead and that I found in my spare bead drawer, and I have a pair of them here. And at the end, finally, there's a glass leaf charm. These things are really cute. And it reminds me, all together, it reminds me of the tea roses that my husband planted at his mother's house, hence the name Rose Hip Earrings. So... To get started here, uh, we're going to have a look at the bead board, so there we go, join me here. We have the tools lined up. I've got pliers one, plier number two, and of course, uh, wire cutters. Yes, that's what they're called. You can tell I've made several tutorials in a row, I'm tripping over my own tongue here. Okay, on the bead board itself, I've lined up the earring uh, ingredients in the order I'll need them. Uh, if you get in the habit of doing that as a beginner, it will really help you as you progress along. It's just uh, easier to find what you need or in case something is missing. So, I have the, uh, the ear wire, I have the center lozenge bead, the chain all lined up, and right next to it the head pin. I have some jump rings ready to go, and the two little beads for the dangles. Now, Actually, this is not a head pin so much as it is an eye pin. I'm going to put my thumb behind it so maybe the contrast will help a bit. A head pin usually has some sort of terminal at the end so the beads don't fall off, uh, which can be plain like a nail head, or it can even be decorative with all manner of loops and googaws and sometimes even precious stones. Um, right now, what I have done is I've converted a plain little old head pin into an eye pin, and they, they do make eye pins to start with, uh, but I simply don't have any on hand. So a nice way to um, make up for that is to just convert head pins. You snip off the head and you make a simple loop on one end of it. You can see previous videos uh, that I've done for simple looping. And here we are. It's a little, a little crooked at the end, but that's okay. It'll be taken care of later. So you hold it with the loop on the bottom and you put your bead on and grasp your pliers at your bead you, you put your pliers and you put the the head pin between them at the eye pin really they're the same thing and you bend it to more or less 90 degrees trim off the excess and for this one I would say hang on to that excess normally I discard it because it's just too little for me to use uh, but this is will end up being just the right length for a dangle later. I'm going to make a simple loop by grasping the end I just cut in my pliers 
with my thumb on top and roll, uh, rotating my wrist towards my body, slow and steady. You don't want to rush with this, otherwise you risk breaking your beads until I've made a loop. And I need to just rest a little bit so it's centered and it's nice and pretty. And then voila, we have one simple loop at each end of the bead and it's ready to connect to stuff. What I'm going to do first to connect it is open up a jump ring. I'm just looking for the seam on top so you can see what I'm doing here. Two pairs of pliers, one on each side, and we're going to twist open. My right hand is coming towards me, my left hand is moving away from me. Put those pliers down. On goes this bead and the chain. Now putting chain on a jump ring can require a little practice. This stymied me at first. But what I do is I try to drape the chain over my finger so it's not dangling away in space and then I can easily get it on the jump ring instead of trying to chase it while it's moving around. So let's close up the jump ring very carefully until the ends meet nice and smooth and oops, there we go right side up now. So you have a bead with a length of chain attached. I'm going to put that down and we're going to make the little dangle. Now Hopefully, because I'm tired of making too many takes, this will be more than enough uh, pin left over for me to make a dangle for this little bead. If not, I have the rest of my pin supply beside me, so if we have to have a cut and a reset, we will. I'm going to make one loop on one end. Okay, on goes the bead. Ah, okay, thank heavens, it's going to be enough. It saves me some embarrassment. Uh, make another simple loop. I have a little bit more than I need, so I'm just going to trim off a little bit. Because I don't want the loop to be too large. It'll look funny. After a while, you... Oh, good heavens, that... Oh, uh, by the way, that was a uh, bad crafting habit. I was pulling the loop too hard. Um, hopefully... Um, if that ever happens to you, and, and I'm sure it will because we're all human, um, you don't end up damaging anything on your beadboard or more importantly yourself. Um, just go slow and steady and gentle with the pliers. You can tell I'm nervous making the video. So luckily I didn't really have anything on my beadboard that would go flying. So okay. My simple loops are done and now I can open up some more jump rings to attach this to the chain. And of course, the leaf at the bottom. Where's my seam? Okay, another jump ring open. And remember, when you're opening the jump rings, only open about as much as you'll need. You don't want to wrench the entire thing open uh, because that can break the jump ring or weaken it enough where the unthinkable will happen and it will break while the piece is being worn, which you certainly don't want. So just enough, and after a while you will develop sort of a, a better, I don't want to say sixth sense, but you'll, you'll develop a sense of just how far open you need to open the jump ring, or just how much excess wire you need to cut off, and, but that is, again is something that comes with practice. You, you'll learn to exercise good judgment. Okay, on goes the leaf, and let's close up this last jump ring, or next to the last jump ring. Okay, we're almost there. And we have to attach the ear wire, and we're finished. So, repetition is key here. Repetition is practice, and if you mess up a little bit, jump rings are cheap, they come in bulk, you'll be okay. Well, unless you went for like the 24 karat ones, or however expensive they get. But I like to use a nice steel if I can. Okay, and here we are. Here you have it. Let me flip this back up. A lovely pair of rose hip earrings. And they're dancing around. <laughs> so uh, enjoy. And if you like, these are going to be going up in my Etsy shop pretty soon. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at Venice in Winter, all one word, at gmail.com. Links are also below for the blog and email in case you have more questions. Okay? Have a great day and happy crafting.